Welcome to the world where we teach you real English in an easy and fun way. This is the first in a series of videos where we're going to explore all the tenses in English. Do you know how many there are? Write it in the comments and let's see who gets it right. It might seem like a lot to learn all the tenses in the English language, but actually it's not as difficult as it seems to learn them all. Follow our videos and you will walk away with a much better understanding of English grammar and also we're going to give you loads of examples so that you can learn them and practice and use them. Before we start, we kindly ask you to click on the subscribe button so you never miss out on our valuable content and our channel can continue growing. Your support means the world to us. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. In this video, we're going to look at all the present tenses in English. Do you know how many there are? Can you name them? Did you say four? Yes, that's exactly right. So it's not really so important to know the names of the tenses, but how to use them properly. We have the present simple, for example, you drive a sports car. The present continuous, you are driving a sports car. The present perfect, you have driven a sports car. The present perfect continuous, you have been driving a sports car. So enough daydreaming about sports cars and let's get down to learning these tenses. We'll look at the structure, use and some useful tips on when and how to use each tense. The present simple is the first tense you learn in English and that's for a good reason because it's one native speakers use in around 50% of their written and spoken communication. Okay, so the structure, like its name, is simple. We have the subject plus the base form of the verb, except for the third person singular, and this is always very tricky for students when starting to learn English. In the third person singular, we add an S. So for I, you, we, and they, it's work. I work, you understand, we speak, they run. But for he, she, it, is it is, she speaks, he runs, it works. This works for all the verbs except for one, which is the verb to be. It has its own forms, which is I am, you are, he, she, it, is, we are and they are. Use the present simple to talk about habits, general truths, permanent situations and facts. So if it's something you always do or it is a universal fact, go for present simple. For example, water boils at 100 degrees. That is a general truth or fact. On a more personal note, when you introduce yourself or talk about yourself, you use the present simple. For example, my name is Daniela, I am a teacher. This is a general statement or fact. I work for the World Language School. This is a permanent situation. If you want to know more on how to introduce yourself confidently in English, there is a video on our channel that teaches you step by step how to prepare a self-introduction. You can learn tips for making a strong first impression. It's perfect for beginners and for those wanting to improve their skills. So watch now to feel confident introducing yourself in any situation. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with friends. We also use the present simple to talk about habits and routines. I play football every Saturday. That's a routine. Signal words or phrases that often accompany this tense are adverbs of frequency like always, usually, every day. We also use the present simple to talk about scheduled events like plane and train times. The train to Paris leaves at 5 p.m. That's a scheduled event. The next tense is the present continuous. It is used to talk about actions that are happening right now. The structure of the present continuous is subject plus B plus verb plus ing. For example, I am reading a book or I'm eating a delicious pizza. We use the present continuous to talk about things that are happening right now at the moment of speaking. For example, I am recording a voiceover or she's cooking dinner. We can also use this tense to talk about things that we think are temporary. Compare these two sentences. I work in Madrid. I am working in London this week. In the first sentence, I use the present simple because it is a more or less a permanent state. But in the second example, I use the present continuous because the situation is temporary. 
but be careful there is an exception with the continuous tenses. You can't use it with verbs that describe a state, a condition or a situation. State verbs include be, believe, like, love, hate, know, understand, want. For example, I'm tired, I want to go home. Not I'm wanting to go home. So even though I'm tired now, you can't say I'm wanting. We don't use no in the present continuous because it is a state, not an action. Actually, there is an exception to the exception and it is tied to everyday use. For example, she's loving her new job. Love is a state verb, so you're not meant to use it, but we use it in this case to emphasize enthusiasm. Last use, we also use the present continuous to talk about arrangements. This means something that we are planning to do in the future. She is flying to Paris next week. This is a future arrangement. I'm meeting my friend at the park tomorrow. This indicates a specific arrangement for tomorrow. Okay, let's move on to the present perfect. Of all the English verb tenses, it is the one which probably can give you a headache. But if you remember a few simple tricks, you can learn to use it well and confidently. Before looking at the use and peculiarity of this tense, let's look at how it is formed. The structure of the present perfect is subject plus has or have plus the past participle. There are three main ways that we use the present perfect in English. The first way is to describe an action that happened recently and has some effect on the present. It's often used with words like just, already, yet or still. I can't get in the house. I've lost my keys. Finished action in the recent past, consequence now. Another example, have you finished the report yet? We use the present perfect also when we talk about unfinished actions that started in the past and continue in the present. We use since for when the action starts and for to refer to the duration of the action. I have lived in this city for five years. If I use the present perfect, it means I am still living in the city. The third and last way is to talk about things that have or haven't happened in our lives without referring to a specific time. For example, I've read that book or she has traveled a lot. We often use ever in questions and never in negative sentences. For example, have you ever been to Italy? No, I've never been there. Now let's move on to the last of the presents, the present perfect continuous or progressive. We use the structure subject plus has or have plus been plus verb plus ing. Now, like the present perfect, this tense is used to talk about an action that started in the past and continues in the present, but there are a few key differences. The first is to describe the length of an ongoing action. For example, she's been working hard all day. Another use is to describe the effect of a recent action or situation. For example, she's tired because she's been working hard. In order to use the present perfect continuous, the verb must be an action verb. So all state verbs need to be in the simple form as we discussed for the present continuous. For example, we've known each other for years. You can't say we have been knowing each other for years. And likewise, I've always liked this band, not I've always been liking this band. Okay, we made it through the present tenses and that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you learned something useful. Watch out for our next videos on past, future and conditional tenses. Mastering a language is all about practice and perseverance. So keep practicing, keep learning and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how we grow as learners. And remember, as we say in English, practice makes perfect. If you like this video, please hit the like button and we hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.